right so hopefully lockdown's going to be ending pretty soon hopefully hopefully by easter early spring we're going to be able to go back to our boats today me and bailey have come to have a look at a classic laser we don't think this cover has been off this boat since probably september 2019 and as you can tell it's pretty mank and the first thing you'll notice when we take it when we take it off is that in actual fact the whole this the gunnel side here is actually riddled with os with osmosis because the cover is actually uh, holding dampness underneath it and there's been no air let into it it's got it's got osmosis down here we're about to show you some close-ups of, of of uh, what that looks like it's it's bubbled it's bubbles there's actually moisture in with this gel so the first thing we really want to tackle on this and it is is how to remove that so we haven't difficulty showing you this on, on video so we've gone to still camera here to show you um, exactly what this looks like having taken the cover back as you can see the um, gunnel uh, is pickled with uh, tiny little bubbles and this is where uh, moisture has been completely trapped underneath a non-breathable cover for quite a long length of time and um, it, it's got nowhere to go and it actually basically works its way into the gel I'm doing this very simply rather than getting too technical and actually gets trapped and that's what these bubbles are and eventually they would just carry on growing and the worst case scenario is they will burst and you will have tiny little cracks in the gel in actual fact, the majority of the time, on a nice sunny good day, um, uh, these bubbles will just dis will actually literally just disappear on the on the sort of fairly lower level um, of, of condition, um, and no problem at all. This is the, the example here is actually too bad. So in actual fact, um, we would tackle this by by lightly rubbing it down with actually in this case about three twenty grit wet and dry. Um, and as you can see in the in the in the second fit photograph here, that's that's it having been rubbed rubbed down. It's it's basically just released the uh, the, the trapped moisture, and we would then go through all the different grits of wet and dry and polish it, pop up buff it back through. If you want to see that, we actually have got a YouTube channel video that actually shows us doing doing that, um, and. And that would be perfect. But the, the answer really to avoid it in the first place is have a breathable cover, put your boat away very dry. And even if you're not going sailing, go and visit visit the boat at least once a month, take the cover right off, let the whole boat air, um, and that would actually would actually avoid osmosis. Um, but that's one that's the first thing we have to do. Okay, now this is actually my own RS two hundred, which has been sat at the workshop uh, since last October quickly get the cover off it and even though it's got really good it's got a really good cover on it it's actually breathable which I, I would never go cheap on a cover if you can get it breathable that actually helps protect the boat really a lot better as soon as I take the cover off we'll be able to see certain key key features which we'll meet one to tackle Good news is because we've got breathable cover on we haven't got the osmosis issue that we had on that laser but i made the classic error of leaving my rudder inside the boat and if i take the move this to one side we can immediately see that in actual fact we've got the mildew effect in the boat very common situation so i'm going to get this out the big thing we actually really want to do straight away before we go sailing is get your boat completely aired and clean I'd like to show you a really easy trick to actually uh, to actually do it to doing this for us all to clean our boat this non-slip pattern we all have actually holds on to the dirt and it's really difficult to get off I'm going to show you here um, is drill brushes we can easily buy off eBay we've got a set of ten of these uh, four of these for ten pounds they will just fit onto any any standard drill okay I'm actually also going to use Good old, good old cream cleaner. You can get it at any supermarket, any DIY store. Sif Cream is the well-known brand of this. Just get this whole that area damp. No problem at all. Squeeze in a bit of this all over it, and just go in.
There we go. Cheap, immediately clean boat. Why are we doing this? Well, in actual fact, basically, it will be very slippery in the boat. Let's get it, because that, that mildew um, has an effect. So it's very simple. I mean, we all want to have a nice looking boat. Very simple. The other big thing we want to do is we need to actually get all these blocks in the boat. We need to get, we need to wash them. So again, just if you can, get a simple hose, wash wash boat, get into it. Because again, all the sort of little um, algae have dried in there that from when you last went sailing. If you're sailed on the sea, you've got salt encrusted in there. So we want to clean it. Also, so also the last time we probably sailed the boat, we probably didn't actually clean the boat out inside and dry it because we didn't have enough warning about lockdown ending. We're very fortunate today, this is the 5th of February. It's, it's actually quite a nice, pleasant, sunny day before we get the beast from the east. So in actual fact, the one thing I really want to do is get these hatches off. And in actual fact, if you look on the inside of that hatch, it's actually got moisture on it. You can just about see it. Um, so, and again, there will be there will be that sort of gentle moisture actually inside inside the boat. So we want to leave these hatches off for quite a good length of period if we can. It's not just go down to your boat for about 20 minutes. Allow for a good couple of hours to get it aired. Bear in mind that there's, particularly in the front of a 200, there's actually quite a lot of wood support panels on, in, built into the boat where all the fittings are and the bulkhead. The last thing we want is moisture sat inside of here that's actually going to get absorbed by that wood it's not well protected. The other very common thing is all these hatches and the bungs and the bungs have O-rings on them. These will perish over time. And as for if you just don't assume just because that they were fine when you last put the boat away, they are they are still now. An O-ring for a hatch cover is very cheap, £3.50 um, and they're available from, for online from virtually every every um decent chandlery and you could actually almost by by default just out of your year replace these same with the bung at, same bung at the back uh, they've got no ring on on them which again you need to need to check the other thing i would want to do on all these boats is go around every bit of rope i've got in here every bit of shock cord again they can put they can perish over time also the mere fact that they might have got dirt trapped into them and i will want to get all that out I can immediately see on the other side the shock cord's already undone over there. And also said, you know, we put the boat away um, after its last sail and we haven't checked it over. I will want to particularly check any bit of rope that goes into a cleat under load that we then take off. And this is the jib halyard tension uh, system on a 200. And quite often when that's put under pressure, it can actually, when you pull it out, you're ripping it. And I can see just a tiny bit of wear here. So I want to do that on my mast, with all my, all my main halyards, my spinnaker halyards. I'll go through my, my sheets again, make main sheet again, and the jib sheets in particular. Look at the place where they're gonna go into the jib cleats on a common basis and check them over. See if they need, see if they need replacing. The last thing we can want is for something to go wrong on our first couple of sails. It's a waste of time. Whereas at the moment, we can actually easily get things sorted. Okay, many boats have actually got a front hatch. The boat is split into different compartments. And again, this is a very important one, particularly on 200s, because if the, if the hatch isn't right, they'll leak around here like going out of fashion. So again, take that, that O-ring off. That's actually in quite good nick. But if they've been squeezed a lot, or you can see them being perished, or they've got a nick in, and, they, and they're gonna go replace it. So it really is cheap put those and you just put them back in with some silica sealant no problem at all okay I would want to go around to reach out what I said earlier on I would want to go around all the fittings and pulleys here just check that every one of them is working actually what fine and rot uh, rotating properly and actually give them a, wa a wash out with warm water if we can it will it actually actually will save you an awful lot of hassle later on because again any any small scale vegetation algae Particularly salt that's actually been left in there will now be dried in there and will, will actually mean it doesn't rotate quite as well and it will save you a lot of that hustle in the, in the future. Also, let's check your laundry trolleys. One, the cradle, let's make sure there's nothing wrong with the cradles and the supports because how much harm is caused to a boat by a cradle not being right. Also, 
these wide cradles again are very bad for the underside of the boat where there hasn't been moved for quite a long time no air got into it so you can get osmosis so in actual fact what I want to do is lift this boat back probably only about 8 to 10 inches about 20 25 centimeters just so that the the area that the hole that was actually sat on the cradle actually gets air to it and gets gets dried out